Hi, I'm Kat Sheridan, director of the Ohio Arts Council's Rife Gallery. Today, we're gonna to have a look at the exhibition, Shift, Thinking Globally, Acting Locally. This exhibition was curated by Maria Seda Reeder, and we have 11 artists from across the state. So this exhibition um, began programming and planning stages in uh, 2019. And then shortly thereafter, we switched um, into stay at home orders. And, and so most of the curating for this exhibition had to happen over screens. I think the artists work that's in shift are really finding new ways to think through how we can affect our personal intimate uh, purview in ways that have a ripple effect and can affect those outside of us as far as the global world and society. Art is what changes the world. I think art is the catalyst for us to reimagine ourselves in new ways. This is the work of Alison Crescetta. Um, this is a more of an experience that will happen outside of gallery hours. Alison is a performer and an artist who was really wrestling with how to engage in her typical art practice. Clearly, performance typically requires an audience to be present. And so over the co course of COVID, knowing that um, that possibility was in flux and uh, potentially not going to happen. Um, Allison was really able to kind of push through her normal practice and find a new way of engaging in a kind of performance. So she is a level two Reiki master. And so this is now an opportunity for visitors to um, Shift and the Rife Gallery to sign up for an experience with Allison to have a Reiki um, session, a distanced Reiki session over the internet. So the image that Allison chose um, and worked with is a connection to the um, chakral uh, points on the body. In terms of what we're currently experiencing with the pandemic, this need to really prioritize the health and that um, is always physical, but it's also rooted in the spiritual. Um, you know, the health of um, our human bodies is really dependent upon um, more than just the material plane. And, and so she chose this image. She actually took a, a photograph um, of, of a figure in space, um, wanted it to be uh, ambiguous enough that others could identify and kind of put themselves into that space but to also connect it with the more ephemeral um, spiritual uh, work that she's doing through that Reiki um, distance session. This is the work of artist Lorena Molina. It's a multimedia installation of raspberry plants embedded within an actual bed mattress. It came out of a, a memory that she had with her uh, family. She left her homeland of El Salvador when she was young because of the civil war that was happening in her country. And um, she had a memory of a time when her mom tried to cover her with a, a mattress um, in order to protect her from bullets, which obviously wouldn't have protected very much um, in terms of bullets. Um, but the Civil War was raging. Um, and she does a lot of work that considers home and what it means to be home, what it means to be safe, what it means to be free. The red clay that you see dusted around the mattress here symbolizes in her work a lot of times the, the burying of lives that happened in El Salvador during the Civil War. These reminders on either side here are those questions that she hears still in her head. Are you safe? Are you free? Um, and it also implicates the viewer in that question. What does it take to be free? What does it take to feel safe? And how can we make home for ourselves in sites of violence um, and oppression 
the beauty of these raspberry plants, the fact that they've been cared on, the fact that every single day that they are in this gallery, they will be cared for and loved over, um, is a little bit about that kind of transformation that art can allow um, us to experience, um, to take and to compost that which doesn't, no longer serves us, and to, to reclaim it on behalf of growth and newness. These are the archival pigment prints of Amber J. Anderson, who is a Cleveland Heights-based artist. In the midst of the pandemic, there was so much about being home that was really important to a lot of these artists, thinking about the ways in which they could create a practice that supported their um, artistic evolution. These are photographs that she's created based on the models that she's made and then um, made a little space, a kind of uh, dimensional portrait of these homes um, as a way to consider the fact that um, all of us are sort of haunting our spaces, our, our human homes, our houses, uh, but then the fact that that house can be purely imaginative, um, a, a space that's not real but based in fantasy. That was a coping mechanism for a lot of folks during this uh, past year. This whole series is called um, Houses I Have Haunted. She really is reimagining herself in these Victorian spaces, playing with uh, the idea of home as a, a kind of trope of art historical thinking. This is the work of Ha Zhang, a Cincinnati-based um, artist, multidisciplinary artist. This work is called Death, Growth, Repeat, and it is a meditation on the ways in which um, growth can be um, held in uncontrollable and unsustainable spaces. So these are terracotta um, grave markers upon which the artist has placed chia seeds and they're being held in concrete basins and then underneath or on top of which they seem to float on this kind of tile, bathroom tile. It's really rich with symbolism. The tile is a kind of nod to spaces of cleansing and repose. The heaviness of the concrete, uh, the, you know, the, the weight of the need to kind of care for oneself and the ongoing sludge of, of that, you know, entropy that happens in one's everyday existence. So the chia seeds on the, the grave markers um, have a set life cycle. So they will only live for a certain amount of time. They need to be cared for on a daily basis. Um, and there's a weight involved in that uh, constant care and dedication to the plants. Um, so ultimately, there will, they will have a demise. We will see this kind of fostered growth, care and consideration, and then uh, uh, the ending of that cycle. The ways in which um, art, I think, can, can be a lens through which we see this um, difficult truth is um, both beautiful and um, heavy, heavy to carry. This is an installation by artist Danielle Julian Norton. Um, she's based in Columbus. I've worked with her several times before. Um, and whereas she typically creates these kind of oversized contraptions um, that look like they would be Rube Goldberg machines if you started them going. Um, this is a lot more of an intimate collection uh, that she composes on the wall like a painting. In thinking through the past couple of years and Danielle's practice, um, the issue of how to really use absurdity and humor as a kind of leverage for 
heavier issues. A lot of these objects were actually reclaimed, found objects. She wanted them to have a hand-held feel to them. So you might recognize some of the um, parts of an object. This, for instance, looks like it had a, the, an old edge of a baseball bat um, that may have been found. Um, and a lot of the objects were collected on long walks with her daughter. So they were thinking about bigger themes in their lives, but finding that this kind of preciousness of materials and objects could speak to larger ideas that they were um, coming up against. So, um, you know, how do we prioritize uh, a thing if uh, they're so easily and readily thrown away, right? What is the value of an object if it's no longer useful or functional? Um, so she's created this beautiful installation called Two Broken Arms and a Spider. You know, what is reusable? What is considered valuable? What is recyclable? A lot of Danielle's work really tries to prioritize um, environmental concerns. Um, and so there's a sort of preciousness in terms of the way she treats these objects. This is the work of Cincinnati-based artist Terrence Hammonds, who I've worked with in the past, um, an incredible artist. Um, and so it's two parts. One is uh, the beat, well, It Will Always Save Us, which are these really gorgeous, tender portraits of uh, black joy um, that Terrence says is so big, it deserves its own orbit. Um, and so we see these dancing couples um, sitting on the moon, in really just being able to kind of transcend the uh, earthly bounds of our human existence. The reminder of this, you know, as above and so below is the dance floor, which he's uh, created. This is an, an older version of You Have to Get Up to Get Down, um, in which the artist provides viewers with a QR code for a um, musical uh, playlist that reflects the kind of archive of the civil rights in America in 1960s and 70s. He really wanted to um, create an archive of his mom's life and her own experiences. So um, picking songs that were, you know, around when she was a, a young woman growing up and, um, and to kind of represent the civil rights era struggles that were happening. The artist is looking for a way for viewers to acknowledge the past while um, imagining new horizons, better horizons. And so um, that dance floor is a kind of visual archive uh, turned monumental portrait of his, his mom and her own experience, but the larger experience of um, folks in the United States. This is the work of Cleveland-based artist Lauren Davies, um, whose photographs she deconstructs and reconstructs. Photographs of sites in which the artist is seeking to remind us about um, who is being cared for, who is being reformed. So there's industrial sites, old um, derelict um, industrial sites from around the Rust Belt region. And what the artist is doing is she's taking photographs, sending them off to um, places like Walmart where you can get these hand-woven textiles that are you know, machine um, created in order to make these images. And then she brings them into her studio, she pulls them apart, she cuts them up. She's kind of retelling this, this tales, these stories of these places and new ways and there's an implication um, of the viewer in that uh, destruction. So we see these kind of um, frayed edges, torn um, and burnt away spots um, of locations in which um, the ostensible agenda was to help or to, to uh, make something better, something new. 
um, and the, maybe the material reality contradicts those kinds of um, agendas. These are photographs created by um, Akron-based photographer Autumn Bland. Um, they're a series that she began in March of 2020, um, which she managed to photograph 750 plus people. These portraits of the pandemic really speak to the different kinds of, of experiences that all of us had. I, there were so many photographs to get to choose from. Um, being able to really uh, pull out some of the folks who I think were doing some of the heavy lifting, whether it was just staying at home and choosing not to, um, you know, place others' lives at risk, or the folks who were because of their jobs um, or because of their commitment to um, any sort of labor, um, were really finding safe ways of continuing their work. So there's everyone from um, folks who were, you know, making sure that people could go out and vote safely, who were registered to vote, uh, folks who were needing to be tested on the, you know, for COVID, or were just, you know, on those front lines day in and day out. Um, but then there's also the systems that need uh, constant care as well. So we see some really, what I think are beautiful portraits of um, different people from around the Akron area who were doing the kind of heavy lifting um, throughout this past year that needed to be done. And, and um, Autumn was one of them really, you know, being able to, to see her work as a photographer as part of that essential work um, that was happening um, was probably not an easy choice to make. Um, and yet she was able to do so safely and distanced and has continued this body of work. These are the works of Hamilton, Ohio-based artist Tracy Featherstone, um, who I've worked with multiple times in the past um, and just has such a creative way of using materials. Um, so she uses discarded, um, often considered uh, detritus of, you know, other work. Um, so the kind of residue of other things that are created are often repurposed and reimagined through her own creative practice. She had a moment um, when she was on vacation and she was snorkeling in corals and um, was so impressed by this experience of this, the beauty, the kind of majestic beauty that she was seeing. But then having the question in her head that just her mere presence there was probably not good for the coral. There is a lot of self-implication, I think, that. Um, artists who are critical thinkers can, can do. And she has worked through um, her own practice. She's currently uh, head of the printmaking department at Miami University in Miami, Oxford, and um, has found a way through um, using environmentally sustainable inks um, throughout that printmaking lab, which is not an easy task. Um, and she has, uh, for this, these pieces, uh, repurposed old jeans uh, and old canvases from past works, um, you know, kind of given them the care and love and attention to remake them into a new kind of object. And then the, the 2D pieces that you see on the ends um, came out of another project that she was doing in which she had to spray paint other works um, and these were the background papers that uh, were used to kind of protect the surface of her table and so in doing so she realized the kind of you know beauty that was inherent within these objects and um, reinterpreted them you know if one was to compose a painting out of this what would it look like and so she's reimagined what can be art um, through the use of thrown away objects. This is a room installation by M. Carmen Lane, a two-spirit 
African-American, Mohawk and Tuscarora artist entitled Compound Effigy for Makia Bryant. Um, and it is a reference to the um, Adena mounds uh, from the local tribes around Columbus. It's a site specific to Columbus. Um, Carmen is a Cleveland based artist. Um, and so they came to the Adena mound and recorded um, a close up imagery and then created this multimedia installation in the Rife Gallery as a site of meditation. Um, their work with Atonsic, which is a, a center for healing um, and urban retreat in Cleveland, does similar things in that it's um, using location and site specific specificity as a way to kind of reimagine and pay homage to um, lives that have been lost and uh, works that were done in, in a location, in a space. The Shrum Burial Mound, which uh, Carmen came down and recorded uh, over the course of 2020, is what one will see in the installation. And um, they've really tried to create a kind of sacred space and portal for reimagining um, the ways in which um, locations can either heal or um, be sites of ongoing oppression. So they're really encouraging a kind of shift from colonial gaze um, and uh, reimagining what if centering uh, African-American and, and uh, indigenous folks experience had been what this place could be, what these kinds of um, locations might um, serve to remind us. This is the work of printmaker and visual artist Kevin Harris, um, who's out of Dayton, Ohio. Um, he is what I like to consider a kind of visual um, remixer. He takes either found imagery or is creating his own. He's showing us these childlike characters um, who are also weaponized. Um, he is asking us to consider how we allow certain people to be kids or longer to have longer lives as children um, versus other children and um, so he's using this very recognizable iconography of a cherub who we associate with love um, but who also was rep weaponized right the um, cherub would have had the, the bow and arrow um, and so does that make them a threat um, does that mean that they are not a child? So he takes imagery from popular culture, from photographs that he takes on the street, um, and kind of visually remixes them for uh, a new way of seeing. The pigment prints, Hive, um, are seen and scattered throughout the gallery to remind us that there is a constant need to be considerate about who is being centered, who is being considered a threat. The bees act as a kind of pollinator, which we need, um, which we need as a you know human uh, species in order to survive. They you know pollinate all of our plants. We would die without them. Um, yet people tend to have a really visceral reaction to bees, right? They're, they're scary. They have stingers. They could hurt us. They could kill us if we are allergic to them. So the pollinator series, which are, you know, throughout the, um, the exhibition are really a way to get viewers to remind ourselves that that is a cons constant daily experience for a lot of folks in this world, um, that they might be seen as a, as a threat yet, um, we need everyone to be here. We need all parties present to show up to the table. A lot of this show feels like a, a, a way to kind of build consensus, um, to find a way through all the difficulties that we've been experiencing as uh, you know, small communities, larger um, states, and you know, who are all part of a, a nation that's really um, going through a lot that's part of a, a continent, a globe that's going through a lot right now. Um, you know, we have, we have crises that are not just affecting us 
as individuals, but as global participants. Um, and I think that Kevin is really kind of culling from different sources, um, art historical, um, you know, photographs that he takes of, of the street and really um, trying to remix a, a new language uh, to, to get us to find new ways through. I also wanted to thank the Ohio Arts Council and Kat Sheridan, the director of the Rife Gallery, to have this platform to be able to show their work is a tremendous gift to this community. Thank you again for joining us. I'd like to give a special thank you to the Ohio Arts Council's board, the governor, and the Ohio legislature who support the Ohio Arts Council and this great space.